Hey everybody, welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name is Scott Kelby and joining me today is a man whose brilliance is brighter than a thousand burning suns. Where is he? It's you. <laughs> Matt Kluskowski. Hey everybody, how you doing? Good to be back. Yeah. I missed, yeah. Uh, I missed, God, I missed last week and the week before. Dude, you've been everywhere. You've been everywhere. I don't even remember where I was. Whoa, yeah. Breckenridge, so. you were snow skiing, buddy. Yeah, I was snow skiing and uh, spring break with the fam. So, and then you had uh, a seminar the week before? And then I was in uh, WPPI and WPPI. Uh, LA at a seminar. Whippy. The week after, so. Hey, we're glad to have you guys here. Uh, for those of you who are watching us live, you just probably realized that the chat is not working. We don't know why. It's not on our end. It's on some other end. But <laughs> we are monitoring your your comments and questions on the Twitter. Le Twitter. So go to Twitter and uh, just use the hashtag um, pound, pound sign, the grid live. We're going to monitor it here. And, of course, you can just go to either my or Matt's you know, Twitter page. We're watching those as well. Uh, Brad, who would normally be helping, is just going to stand there. No, you're going to watch Twitter, aren't you? Brad's watching Pound the Grid Live. He'll put up your comments here. So even though we're not allowed to, because of this problem, we're not allowed to use the, we're not allowed to use, we can't use the live, yeah, the chat. live chat. We're still taking your questions. And we have a very exciting show today. One of our very, very good friends, good friend of Matt and my, our personal friend of ours. And, and the reason why you're speaking French. And the reason why I'm speaking the, France today. With the accent. No, and the, uh, anyway, uh, he is a, a tremendous photographer, Photoshop guru. Uh, he, is, he is king of France, really. Uh, and he's going to be with us uh, today. We're going to be talking about travel photography. We're very excited about that. He's a great guy, and we're, we're excited to bring it uh Bring him to you. Yeah. Hey, um, we are just a few weeks away from Photoshop. Dude, World. I can't wait. I know this it's going to be the, in Atlanta. These, yeah, this is like the happiest times of the year for us here. Oh, we love we love Photoshop World. It's so much fun. Hey, uh, just a couple of things for those of you who are thinking about going or already going. If you're already signed up for Photoshop World, Canon is going to be there doing full photo. They're cleaning your cameras. They're cleaning your cameras. They're doing the sensor cleaning the sen and all yeah. that stuff, and they do a great job of it. They, they bring their Canon CPS reps down there, their Canon Professional Services rep. They they do a whole thing on your on your free, 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 free. So hats I'm off to Canon. Off. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, actually, mine's pretty clean. <laughs> anyway, mine's not. Not after my last trip. <laughs> well, you you go you you you're mean to your stuff. I shoot in a studio. I sneeze inside of my camera. Oh, he I'm does. He's terrible. Lenses, so. Anyway, uh, also while a lot of the pre-conference, so the day before Photoshop World, we have pre-conference mm -hmm. workshops. A lot of them have sold out, but there's still some that that if you want to get in the day before and take an intensive optional workshop, you can go to photoshopworld.com and sign yep. up. We also, uh, there's a few tickets left to the party. Not many, but if you want to go, uh, we have a party that's where everybody gets together, and it's in a bowling alley this time. We're bowling it's with the instructors, we call it. Those, no, is the is the band playing there too? Band's not playing. We're just bowling and, and games and uh, liquor. Dude, I, lots of liquor. Lots of liquor. I gotta, I gotta tell you. So I it was, it was probably five, six, seven years ago. Photoshop World. But my favorite party that I can ever remember was was a bowling one. Was it in Boston? Uh, I think it was in Boston. Yeah, we did a thing in the bowling and, alley, and that was that was my favorite party because it's like right you, next you, to Fenway. You get with all the attendees, and everybody's bowling, and you're competing, and just yeah. having fun. And in the bowling places we bets. go to, it's not like your standard bowling alley. It's like the new yeah. hip nightclub with bowling. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, it's one of and, my favorites. And also, we have a thing uh, that that you can go to called Photoshop World Midnight Madness. Uh, it's it's an after hours event, and we there's no learning, just like this show. There's no <laughs> learning. It's really. Just for fun. Anyway, we hope we'll see you there. Hey, we got some giveaways for you today. What do we yeah. got? Uh, the Road to Seeing. So this is Dan Winters. Big. Big. Big book. Big book published by our friends at Peach Pit Press and New Writers Imprint. And um, I haven't seen this book yet. My, my I've editor heard Ted great things about I've it. I've heard he said great things about it, but I said, oh. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've heard wonderful things about it. RC, well, RC walked in with it. I can it. tell you right now, it's packed full of good-looking yeah. images. RC walked in with it the other day, and he was ecstatic, so. Ooh. Yeah. Anyway, we'll be giving hey, one of those away today. Can we bring it? We got to give away. I don't, I don't I, I thought we had one here. Can we, we got to give away a copy of uh, Corey Barker's new book, too. Oh, yeah. We got to give a copy. Corey Barker's Down and Dirty Tricks book. Can, you know what else, too? Can I tell you something? I want to give away a copy of Matt's compositing book. Dude, you know how many times a week somebody says to me, I, just yesterday, or maybe it's even today on, on Facebook, where someone's saying, I need to know how to cut somebody out of a background and put them on another background yeah. and make it look convincing. I'm like, you got to get Matt's book. We're going to give away one of those today, his book photo galore. compositing secret. It's a book fiesta. And should we give away a full conference pass to Photoshop World? Okay. We're very close. <laughs> full conference pass to Photoshop World, 699 bucks. 
You got to get yourself there. Yeah, you got to get yourself there. But, but we'll get gonna, you in for free. Let me tell you what. Once you get there, but Atlanta, 19 days away from today. Um, so help us spread the word too about Photoshop World if you want to tell the friends. Anybody you know in the Atlanta, Georgia area wants to I come don't, out and party with us? I don't know if it's ever been in a more affordable place to get to. That's because every flight <laughs> it goes to Atlanta. Yeah, everything goes to Atlanta at some point. So It's, it's the busiest airport in the world. Yeah. So. It's the number one busiest airport getting there, in the world. Getting there shouldn't be too much of a problem. All right. Hey, we're going to take a short break. Uh, when we come back we're gonna we're joining us will be our very very special guest all the way from france serge remini serge. a beautiful man so stick around we're gonna have a lot of fun with serge here on the set don't go away you were live here on the grid Wait, wait, hand offset through, boom. Look at Corey's, that. Corey's book just showed up. Look there at it what is. just Bang. magically appeared, but you Corey know Barker. But you know, if there's anything better than Corey's book, it's Sir. our very <laughs> special guest. We are very proud to have on our show for the first time ever, Mr. Serge Ramilly. Merci beaucoup, Scott. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Hey, Matt. Sir. I actually met you through Matt. Absolutely. Totalement. So, uh, Matt, was, you, you were heading to, to France? Well, tell him, sir. Do you, do you yeah, it was, uh, you, you were in London, I think, doing uh, some uh, workshop. Yeah, or, somewhere. I heard. And then uh, you, on, the, on your blog, I've been following you for years, yeah. and on your blog you said, I'm coming to Paris tomorrow, anybody knows any good places to shoot. And then I sent you my photos, and he was like, wow. You know, <laughs> I was like, I'm take bit, me there. <laughs> and it was a funny story because uh, Matt says, uh, meet <clears throat> me at 5 o'clock in the morning in front of Notre Dame. And there's like no one. It's like literally the middle of the night. And I've never met Matt, and I've never met any human being at five o'clock in the morning in front of Notre Dame. So I here, do sunrise. He was gonna rob you. Yeah. So here I come, and it was like usually it's like thousands of people in front of Notre Dame, and there was only Matt standing there. <laughs> and so it was like, hi, Serge, Matt. And then we we had a ball. We, yeah, we, we went shot for like three days nonstop in all the hidden we, places of Paris. It was really cool. We had cold, we had rain, and we had everything. Cold rain. Yeah, we didn't have it all at the same time. It was cold there. At that, that was really that cold. It was the coldest March. All right. Now, uh, how I met Serge was I'm going to France to do a class on travel photography and to do a thing with Jay Maisel. And Matt says, you got to meet this guy, Serge. And he said to me, he said, this guy has got like an iconic shot of every place in Paris. He knows all the places. So he takes me to Serge's website and I'm looking at the shots. I'm like. Oh, I, I got to call this guy. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, I went, so Serge and I, we, we, I went and did this week, and then I went back, and, and my wife and I hung out with Serge and his wife, and she's a sweetheart. And uh, we had so much fun. And, and I've told the story many times of you and I driving out to Mont Saint-Michel, which we'll tell in a minute here on the show. But um, if you go to almost, almost any gift shop in France, you know how they have postcards? And then they have these really, really nice big prints behind it? 
those are Serge's. I saw them all over, yeah. all over Paris, everywhere you go. Because you you do, you've got such a, a, a wonderful collection of, of travel images. And they sell them big. I mean, they're not little postcards. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've been shooting Paris for eight years, so I've kind of like, you know, and I've learned all the, the good Lightroom and Photoshop stuff from you guys. So they look pretty awesome. And, you know, also when you can come, when you have the opportunity to come like 12 or 15 times to the Montmartre stairs, you know, you get get the right light, well, you know. <laughs> so, so Serge does what, what, I mean, I think we, we've always, always talked to people about, which is um, sometimes you don't get the, the great shot of something the first time you go. No, no. you gotta go back and I back. mean, whether it's, whether it's Paris, whether it's a national park, wherever it happens to be, if you're shooting outdoors, hmm. you gotta keep going back to these places. Absolutely. And, uh, and you did it. I mean, like you said, yeah. you go, what, 15, 20 times? Yeah, sometimes? absolutely. Um, actually, even more, but there, I remember this one story. There's a specific stairs in Montmartre which are very dramatic and it's the only stairs where you can where the sun sets in front so you can have the sunset and the stairs they're very popular but there's loads of tourists and we have very little sunsets in paris it's you know like once a month twice a month it's not like florida where you have this every day every day yeah. anyway so and so i went back like i think 16 times to get the shot but you know been living there it's easy for me you know yeah. but uh yeah i mean there's there's nothing like getting it right in the camera you know of course i can change the sky and do all kind of you know, anything we can do, but there's a sort of proudness, you know, oh, yeah. having it right in the camera, you know. Well, yeah, oh, I mean, I think that's our basic job as photographers is the framing and the composition and as much as we can. I want to finish it in Photoshop, as Moose says. I don't want to fix it. I want yeah. to just finish it off. But, you know, the funny thing is when I started into photography, I was all about, like, changing the skies and doing special effects. And more as I go along, more I try to get it right in the camera. And it's, at first it was, like, all these toys were really fun for me. But now, if I can get it right in the camera, I get so much more satisfaction than having to add a cloud there. You know, I don't know. It's just like, it's some phase you go through. I mean, now, I, I went through at least. Now, see, I have a weird Photoshop ethics thing. I won't add something to a photo that's not there. I don't want to add clouds. I won't add... I'll take stuff away. Dude, I got no problem. If there's a beer can, whew, it's gone. If there's something <laughs> bad in my photo, power lines. I, I And it's weird because... Someone could say, so you're totally fine with changing the photo, mm. taking something yeah. away, but you won't add clouds. I've done it twice. There are two photos that I've added clouds to, and, and I, I don't even show them. You never, they're not in my portfolio. Because <laughs> I see them, and I, I feel like I cheated on them. Oh, you you're right. You're yeah. right. Because, no. because, I mean, I could have moved the beer can. I couldn't do much about the wires, but I could have moved the yeah. beer can. And so, in some ways, what I'm doing is removing a distracting thing or something that I could have physically moved, perhaps. But adding clouds, I, could, I couldn't make those clouds. That's a trick. Yeah, but you know why? I, I'm adding them because I could do it. When you can do something, you feel like a magician. You know, oh, I can add clouds. You know, it's, yeah. you know, when you're starting, I mean, you've been in Photoshop, you know, for 18, 16 or something. Just started. Yeah, just started. Did you say you since know? 18, 16? Yeah. Since 18, 16. <laughs> wow, actually. dude. Yeah. yeah. When I started. Like, you know, that's what I started. We to used to use, it was done with rocks. <laughs> <laughs> At the time. But anyway, I, I got in late, you know, and... Uh, and so, you know, whenever I found something, you know, that I really like, I was like, wow, this is really yeah. cool, you know, and then I would abuse it, you know, for like months and months. But as I go on and, you know, I just trying to get right into camera. No, your stuff is very, very tasty. Hey, some Thank people you. are saying hi, just I want to pass it on. First off, for those of you who are just joining us, number one, Serge. Number two is our, our chat, for whatever reason, isn't working today. First time ever on the show, the chat has gone bad, but it, it's, it, we, we're, it's, we're stuck. So here's what we're asking you to do. Go to Twitter. And just add the hashtag at the end of your comment or question, pound the grid live, the pound sign, and then the grid live. We're monitoring it here. Brad's monitoring it. We're monitoring it here on, on. and also some people are stopping in to say hi. Uh, Stephanie Ricker, or Richer, mm -hmm. is saying, uh, bienvenue au Serge. Merci beaucoup. There you go. <laughs> uh, Dave Clayton, our buddy from London. It's the international day here on the grid. Uh, Dave Clayton just dropped in and said, hi. Uh, he said, hi, guys. Hello to our great friend, Photo Serge, which you're at Photo Serge on Twitter. Yes. And he says, uh, not long till Photoshop World when he sees you there. Dave's coming over. You're going to be at Photoshop World. Yes, I am. Look at that. And, uh, oh, more comments are coming in. Hey, so uh, we would appreciate it if you guys that are watching at home would just send out a tweet real quick and say, come join us on the grid. Monsieur Serge is here today. Merci beaucoup. There you go. Greetings from Cancun there. And uh, this Cancun. one, Mark says, I follow Serge for a long time. His accent and photos are a joy. <laughs> oh, Merci gosh, beaucoup. everything's blowing up here. All right. So I, I got to wonder. Wait like, a minute. You did do a, did you do an episode of the grid before you did, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I said this was the first time, but it's, yeah. it's you did it with Matt. Absolutely, not with me. So can I that say that was it? the first time with you? Is this your third time? No, it's my second time. It's the first okay. time with oh, you. Yeah. 
Okay, that's what I was saying. So I'm saying it's, because I said earlier it was the first time, but it's not your first time. Okay, that's it's your first fine. time with me. All right, Which is hey, an honor. So I gotta We're wonder, gonna... I, I, real quick though, I gotta wonder, like, how many other people, because what you guys were just saying before about, like, the, the more, y you, you know more and more about Photoshop, but you want to use less and less of so, it, because it's happened to me too. Like, I, I could change the sky like that, hmm. but I don't want to. And True. I used to do it so many times, but it's like today. It's like, and and I don't have a moral thing against it. No, I, I'll, I'll change this guy no problem if, if that's it's, all I have. It's but. changing your enjoyment of, of of how you make the image. Yeah, yeah. Now it's more important to you, and it is to me. It is to Sarah original to to be able to capture as much of it as we can. Hmm. I, I'm not hesitant about boosting content co uh, contrast or vibrance yeah. or those things. But as far as like you know doing crazy stuff, I wonder you, if it's, you do. You used to do a lot of HDR and you do virtually no HDR. No, never, yeah. I haven't opened up an HDR program other than yeah. a demo. But yeah. I, and I wonder if it's also like like because we're talking a lot of outdoor stuff. If it's the experience too, it's yeah. like I want to experience the killer sunset not have to yeah. go find clouds from another sunset right. and put them in. The thing is, you know, when you made it, when, when you got the great sunset or the great photo that you wanted, you know, you have a process of doing it and you want to redo it and redo it and redo it and redo it. So using Photoshop, I mean, the only time, you know, maybe I would do it is like if I'm one day in New York and I'm having one, one shot and I don't know, but it's yeah. just, I, I wouldn't put it in my portfolio. I wouldn't try to sell it. I mean, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's but it's one thing. One thing I realized it, that works for anything. Like for example, when I remember you showed me this Kelvin Hollywood trick of boosting the, uh, you know, the uh, details in a photo. Right. I I did it like for three weeks. I was like, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's a great technique, you know. But you know, or when I get Colorific Pro for the first time, I'm like, wow. I just get you know, not sick of it, but I come back to the basics of just trying to get yeah. it right on camera all the time. And um, so it's like I used to fish when I was a kid a lot, and you know, it's like fishing and getting a great fish you know it's the same feeling when you go and get a great photo that's just yeah. so when you when you when you take a fish we like say it's a mom fish and it has little baby fish and it's living its <laughs> life and you you take a steel hook and you jam it into its face and you yank it out of the water that kind of feeling yeah <laughs> it's fish it's fishy kids miss it it's fishy kids yeah. like, mom, mom, mom. Now anyway, take it out hey, and sing a song and put it back bring in it around water. boys bring it around here's <laughs> what we want to talk about today monsieur fish oui monsieur Travel photography. Dude, you are a great travel photographer. Now, Merci. I will say this. You're also living in freaking Paris. That does help a bit. If yeah. you want to be a travel photographer and you live in Cleveland, you may not have as many opportunities as you do. Because I'll tell you one thing about Paris. And you know, you turn a corner and there's another shot. Yeah, it's crazy. Everywhere you go for days yeah. and days, you turn a corner. <gasps> I mean, it's amazing. But, but, but you really... In a city that has been photographed as much as Paris has, you do have the iconic shots, but you've also been able to capture some really special shots. So, I, and what I was hoping to do today was was to have you share some of your sure. your, your photo tips. Um, anything from like when do you like to shoot best? Like any ideas or I mean. Tip number one, that's something you said. I remember it because I learned this from you. One day you said, whatever scene or monument or place you will find, it will always look better at sunrise or sunset. Yep. I remember you said that. And that's how I learned, you know, actually, because I used to be shooting like in the afternoon, you know, and then I mean, that's way back a few years back. And you said that and I said, he's right. And there is now, you know, you go, come to Notre Dame and uh, I mean, honestly, the best is sunrise because Paris is a very loaded with tourists. And there is a sunrise, so you get you get the good lights. Because <laughs> there's you, just me and Serge out there. <laughs> and there's like no one. I mean, literally, there's no one. Like for example, one of my favorite bridge is the Pont des Arts, which is like a walking, uh, you know, yeah, that's that's bridge. That bridge in the morning, that's when we went together. Yeah. It's there's literally two thousand people at all time, except it only starts like at seven in the morning or something. So if you do come, not only you get a good light because you get a good, nice sunrise, but you get no one there, you know. So honestly, if you are courageous and you are uh, you know, going to, you know, I went to Israel, for example, to do some shoots. I really got up like every morning at five or six, you know, to go to uh, the market in the old city of Jerusalem and trying to, there's, I mean, that's the- You really liked Jerusalem, didn't you? I, I loved it. It's an amazing place. Can we switch to my computer? I, I, I connected, there we go. I, I wanna just take, I just went to Google. I typed in your name and then I clicked on images and so many of your beautiful images came up here. Now, where is this? Is this Ohio? <laughs> right. And this is Venice, Boston. That's... Yeah, right. Hey, you know what? I saw a picture I was there for. This that's one. Right. Remember. Oh, that was a funny story. Scott tells me, he says, the Eiffel Tower has been shot to death. 
And we have to find a way to shoot it like no one ever did. And then I had this idea, why don't we make a panel? So we were close to the feet of it and just starting taking photos like this you know, to make a panel of it. The whole idea was trying to be original, you know, to have a look of the Eiffel Tower like no one ever did. And it really came out really cool. It really did. Now, yeah. this is... Oh, no, which bridge is this? That's the Pont Neuf. That's one of my favorites. There's two. That's my favorite. That's the Pont Neuf. And... Uh, Oops, there you are, doing a guest blog. Right. Oh, yeah, there was a... Pull enough, and my, my other favorite is this one. That's the Alexander Three Bridge. The Alexander. Oh, that's a beautiful that's, bridge. That's the one where you, you shot the models yeah. when we're in Paris. Very nice. And uh, anyway, there's all kinds of great shots. Here's uh, Mont Saint Michel. Hey, so Serge and I, we have a story about this place. This, this one is really cool too. Oh, this one. We have a story. <laughs> so, first off, I find out that Serge never. Um, has never been there. It's four hours from Paris. The guy in his whole life has never been. This is a monastery and a city. And you can see here in this picture, sitting literally out, out in the in the in the water, like like in all by itself. This this. I wish there was a further away shot so you could see a little better. Uh, I have it one. looks like something Disney made. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like cool. a little island. Yeah, it's fully. Cool. There we all go. Right. More like that. Yeah. And the, the ocean comes in, the ocean goes out, there's different times. And so uh, I convinced Serge to, to not only go there, but to drive me and my wife out there four hours. We drive four hours in the worst rain <laughs> and storm you've ever seen. And just as we're pulling into the parking lot, now the parking lot is probably a half hour walk. It's a straight walk on a flat, you know, there used to be a road. I mean, it's still a road, but they used to let cars on it. They don't anymore. But it's a half hour walk. And in the half hour, it goes from the worst sky you've ever seen to the sky that you see here on screen, which is was just beautiful. Um, and when we get there, there's a big sign, and it says, danger, <laughs> quicksand. And our wives look at us, and they go, you're not going out there. And we're <laughs> like, oh, of course we have to go out there. We can't this way. It's, it's magnifique. It's crazy. It's fou. Anyway, <laughs> we look at our wives, and here's where we got lucky, because we weren't the only stupid people. We look out there, and there's two other stupid photographers way out there, and we're like, Honey, look, they did it, and they're not dead. <laughs> and they were not happy about it, but they let us go. And so we're walking, me and Serge. And then Serge is in front of me, maybe 10 feet. Serge takes a step, and I kid you not, the ground rippled like it was pudding. It went, boom. <laughs> and I'm like, Serge, get back, Serge. And so here's what we learned. What's well, all what we learned. If you keep moving, you don't <laughs> sink. You don't sink. You just got to keep going. You just got to keep. But if you stop and set up your tripod for an HDR, I'm, I'm sitting there. <laughs> And I'm looking through my tripod, and I'm, I'm seeing, uh-oh, um, this isn't good. And I realized that my <laughs> tripod's sinking. But it's not just your tripod. I looked down, and I'm, I had to call Serge over him. He tries to pull me out. <laughs> now, I'm not down to here. I mean, it's like you're this far down, but you can't get out. And then Serge comes over. He starts to pull me out, and he starts going down. Once We, <laughs> we got nervous there for a minute, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, I did. I really got scared because, you know, I've heard stories. This place is, you know... People die there and stuff. So it, you know. Yeah, uh, two years ago, a woman goes out there by herself. Don't ever go out there by yourself. Mm. She goes out there by herself, and the tide comes in, and she drowns right yeah. there on the spot. Yeah, because they, they get stuck in the quicksand. And then because uh, the, uh, when the water comes back, it comes back at the speed of a horse uh, riding. That, it's like a wave coming. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you're stuck there, that's how you die. You get the water over, you know. But, you, you know, there is, like, firemen. They, they know it. You know, there's been mm -hmm. so many problems there. There's so many people dying out there. Well, there's been, you know. <laughs> All right. Hey, so there's a question. I got to say it was worth the trip, though. That's uh, when you guys, oh, when, yeah. you got, when I saw photos from that trip, that's that's one of my favorite. I mean, you got probably like one of the most spectacular yeah, yeah, think, sunsets I, you I, can I, get there. I wonder if I even have that one on my, I better have it in my, uh, I hope you do. my portfolio, I better. But I mean, that that was a spectacular sunset. I mean, I don't, not many people can get that. Yeah, we got really lucky. I mean, it's. I think it's the first time of my life that it went from so much bad weather. Yeah. Because my nightmare as a photographer is white sky and blue sky. You know, because as long as you have contrast, you can get an interesting shot. But just blue, 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 or just pure white. And it was just like pure white and raining, and we just come there, and it just goes like, whoa. And uh, it was pretty crazy. I don't have this picture in my portfolio. Did you need to put that picture in your I know, portfolio? I know. Yeah, Dude, I it's it. not there. I'll have to go searching for it. Uh, Mont, the Mont Saint Michel. Michel, I'm sure. So sometimes luck like, knocks at your door, you know. Thirty to bit, yeah, that's not possible. Yeah, that one's cool. I got a better one. Yeah, I've seen it. You got, yeah, you've got, no, you guys got, both have. I got a really good Ooh, is one. That the, is that the one? That's a better one, but that's not the one. 
Yeah. This is a nice one. Here. Yeah, that's that's funny because that's when it started to be really cool. Right. Here's one I got. This is one of mine. Whoops, there it is. So that's one of mine. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, as we're walking towards it. So the, the sky is, you can still, it's still a little murky. Yeah. It was about a half an hour later when the sky got good. And I'll look for that one in just a second. Hey, uh, while we're looking, GBS Images has a question for you, Serge. Mm -hmm. He's asking, have you had any experience with Vivesa? So the plugin from Nick. He says he loves the structure slider and would love to see that incorporated into Lightroom. Because the structure is very much like Clarity, wouldn't you yeah. say, Matt? It, I think it... I think if you were to use the adjustment brush and increase the clarity, you were looking at something, how close would you say to structure? It's very close. Yeah, it's very structure very. is that the one from Nick Software, right? It's from yeah. Nick, it's, it is a, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's, not, it's uh, when you put a pin down with a Vivesa, one of your choices is uh, structure. Let me see if I have yeah. more. I use it, I don't use Vivesa a lot to answer the question. I use a lot ColorFX Pro and SilverFX Pro and HDRFX Pro. And they will have the structure slider. Sometimes I even use Silver Fix Pro to uh, do my black and white, and I put it in Photoshop in uh, you that's know the one. Ah. light mode. Here's the one. Oh, All that's right. that one. This one is crazy. Okay. This so, one is nuts. Yeah. So this is what the sky looked a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. It's like crazy. I mean, it was like. And there was another guy. There was a guy out there by himself. Remember, there was another guy. Mm. We kind of kept an eye on him to make sure that he didn't sink down. But yeah, that's the. Uh, that's so that's yes, worth putting in a new portfolio. I mean. Yeah, I should I should put that up there. Yeah. So all right. So Serge, you said so you're you're very very concerned about shooting at dawn or dusk, and of course we we timed our day so we would be here at dusk. Right. Um, give me another photo. What else? What else? What are your your tips for? Well, then uh, the the thing is also vintage points. Uh, I always look uh, you know on Google for high points where you can shoot. You know, well I brought you in the uh, Montmartre and the top of the Notre Dame. There's in Paris and everywhere there is a vintage point where you can really see the city, and you really have to Google for it. And uh, and some of them allow tripods, and some don't. Like the roof of the Arc de Triomphe, very famous place, no tripod. They really have like the tripod police with rifles ready to shoot you. <laughs> and then you go to the no, not uh, Montparnasse. And you, yeah, yeah you can. So you have to check. The thing is, today's camera, I really get like I'm shooting a lot with a Sony A7R now, and it's you can. I like that. You're using the Sony. Oh, yeah, I'm, I am. I'm loving it. Not for portraits, but for landscapes, crazy. Yeah. Because the focus is not the fastest in the world, but for landscapes, I, I get so much time crunch. It's a neat camera. Yeah. It's yeah. it's really amazing. Anyway, so yeah, another trick is uh, Google. I mean, I always go to 500px. That's the one thing I do whenever I go to a location. I type in the name, and I find what's the best photo over the area. I, I give that tip on my tour. On my tour, I tell people do your research by going to 500px. Type in the name of the place you want to go. Bang! Here they all come yeah. up. And then I go to Google and type vintage views. You know, or high high vantage uh, high points. Vin yeah, whatever you say that in English. We, we, in, in English, we call it vantage points. There. Well, merci Search. beaucoup, but uh, not in French. You know. <laughs> have, hey, have you ever used the? Uh, it's an app, and it's on your it's on your laptop or it's on your 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 uh, devices too. Uh, the photographers, F, is it ephemeris? No, I use a Sunseeker. Well, so Sunseeker is good. The thing with Sunseeker is, is you have to be there. Right. You have to, the photographers, uh, I think it's ephemeris, uh, E P H. -E yeah, I heard about it, where you can put a location, you can e see how the sun's going to be. So you put in your location, it shows you where the sun and the moon are going to be. So right. if you're not there yet, like if, I, if I'm not in Paris, but I'm going, I can, I can put that in and I can actually see ahead of time where it's going to be. So it's pretty neat. That's it. So the photographer's ephemeris. Yeah. I heard about this app. I, I it's a great app. It's uh, it's because uh, I use Sunseeker too. If if I'm yeah. there, but this is great for research. Uh, Sunseeker is amazing because I I usually do all, you know all the scooting in the afternoon. I don't shoot in the afternoon. I only do the shot you know from like one hour before sunset till the end of sunset. So I only shoot like sunrise, sunset, wherever I go. But even yeah. if I'm training on vacation with family, that's just the way I rock. And there's no way I'm shooting in the afternoon. Like really not. Or unless you know post signs and you know phone booths you know typical things you know where you don't need drama right but I, i'm all about drama and crazy sky so. dude you are about drama can they, uh, can they show that on your can they show your screen they showed it okay did they? okay yeah you guys showed the photographers uh yeah i think they i believe they did there it is again so hey we're gonna take out. a short break when we come back more sirs we're gonna dig deeper into some uh into some travel photography stuff we are taking your questions if you go to twitter and you put in the hashtag Pound the grid live. We're monitoring it here, and we'll be glad to uh, to take your uh, questions and feed them to Serge like a tasty croissant. <laughs> we'll be right back. Don't go away. We are live here on the grid. Le grid. Le grid. Le. I can't, I can't do French accent. So That's okay. You don't in. have to. 
You're fine like you are. You're fantastic. Il est incroyable, Matt. C'est fou. C'est fou. Break time. Peace. All right. This class isn't just a what's in my bag, but it's also a why it's in my bag. Every piece of gear has to have a purpose. It's about the photography, and it's not about the equipment. We brought four local photographers into the studio, bounce questions and answers off of, and talk about the gear and what it would mean to them in their life. You need a camera, you need a lens, and some light. I'm Zach Arias, and check out this class on kelbytraining.com. Hey, we're back live on The Grid. Scott Kelby here with Matt Kleskowski, as always, and our special in-studio guest, Mr. Serge Remeli from France. Eh oui. From Paris. C'est fou. C'est fou. <laughs> hey, uh... A uh, couple comments here. Uh, uh, first off, hey, we got a uh, so uh, Tether Tools, the folks at Tether Tools. Hey, do you know that I was out doing a studio shoot? I'm looking at you, Matt. Yes. Hi. I'm out <laughs> doing a studio <laughs> shoot last week in Phoenix, of all places. Phoenix, Arizona, all the way to Tacoma. Anyway, and Tether Tools is in the same building. They're in the, their headquarters or the building. <laughs> oh, really? I had no idea. Yeah, it was great. Anyway, Tether Tools, and they make, what Tether Tools is a company that makes all the stuff that lets you tether to your laptop. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they make the stand that goes on your tripod mm. and they make the orange cable I use and all that. Anyway, great people, great products. Tether Tools is giving away a Kelby One membership today as part of their Spring Some Swag contest. So go over to facebook.com slash Tether Tools to enter for your chance to win. And win big. Alexandra uh, says uh, Rick Salmon's app has got an app called Photo Sundial, and, is, oh. and it is awesome. That is, thank you very much. Also, Stephanie Richer, so she told me what her name was. I saw it on Twitter. Do tour companies ever hire photographers to capture the trip for participants? Um, or it's cut off there. I can't read the rest of the... Uh, Comment there, Brad. Oh, for pro travel shots. So do tour companies ever hire photographers to capture the trip for participants for pro travel shots? I've never heard of one. I've never seen that. Yeah. Matt? No. No. Not Boy, not Stephanie, either. would that be a good gig, though, if it was, right? Would yeah. that be amazing? Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah Bauman says he's watching the grid live, and he says it gives, uh, it's giving him Photoshop world withdrawals. As he says, if you ever have the chance to go to Photoshop world, there's nothing like it. Wish I was going. Thank you, yeah. Jeremiah. And by the way, anybody wants to say anything about good at Photoshop world, we're guaranteed to read your comment. Hey, uh, <laughs> Peach, Bit, Peach Bit Press has a deal for people that uh, watch the show. They always do. Every week, they give our readers, our viewers, sorry, a deal. So that's forty percent off, and then this is a brand new. You get the ebook. Uh, this is called the ebook is called "Picture Perfect Posing" by Roberto Valenzuela, who was a of course, former famous baseball player, now writing books. Um, go to peachpit.com slash kelby one, and you enter the code kelby one, and they give you ready forty percent off on the ebook. So that's very very great. Can I say that? So I saw that book. Um, I was at WPPI and I was stopped by the Peach Pit booth and they had that. It's a really good book. Well, he's Proposing, very good. He's, he's R- very good. Roberto's awesome. I, I've watched him speak. He's he's great. But that I mean, really, really good book. Really? Yeah, excellent book. I, I, in fact, I got an e copy of it. Oh, hey, uh, I gotta get that. All yeah. right, <laughs> hey, I got a picture for you. So this is a picture taken by my friend Monsieur Serge. This is my wife and I on the top of Notre Dame. Mm. What an easy climb it was to get to the top of that. <laughs> 432 stairs? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, it took me 4.6 weeks <laughs> to, to get up there. Uh, and uh, anyway, it is a beautiful view from up there and a beautiful... Th- thank you for so, that shot, Monsieur Sosh. Did you guys just, like, order up the, the cloud, the, the perfect cloud no, that for was, your entire that was, trip? Yeah, that was really cool, yeah. That's, that's Serge. They come oh. with him. And one thing is, the reason we went there at that time is that it was close for sunset. Otherwise, we would have gone there for sunset. Just, you know, referring back to what we said before. Seriously, every f- picture I see from that trip has got the perfect little puffy white clouds in it. Yeah, I know. We, we got really lucky. We got really lucky. One thing also, another tr- uh, tip and trick I can give, as I shoot a lot of sunrise or sunsets, you get all sorts of sun into the camera. So what I usually do is take two shots, because I hate to have, you know, like this bracketed five 
nine shots. I find that with two shots, one for the building and one for the sky, you're good to go and then you just blend both using layers. And yeah, we were talking about that yeah, earlier. I, I, I do that a lot now because, uh, I mean, with the Sony A7R, to be honest, it's the first camera where I almost don't have to do that because the dynamic range is crazy, like really, I mean, I was on my way to buy the Canon 5D Mark III and I said, okay, I want to try something else and I bought the Sony A7 because I like this whole idea of having it on me all the time. It's very light and the dynamic range is really crazy. But when I'm shooting Canon, I take two photos. When I'm shooting Sony, not so much. Yeah. But what, what Canon do you have? 5D Mark III? No, my, two, my Mark II. I never, I was going to buy the Mark III and then I bought the Sony A7 instead. I know. <laughs> I'm so, we're going to have to take a break now. Uh, we're going to take a break. And <laughs> no, I know you're a big fan. I'm Serge a huge will, Canon fan. Serge will be gone when we come back. No, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Hey, uh, Scott King asks, what's the difference? First, hi, Scott. Second, what's <laughs> the difference between travel photography, long exposure cityscapes, and architectural <laughs> photography? Well, that's, that's interesting. Do <laughs> you want to take that, Serge? Yeah. Well, travel photography is... Uh, as it says, when you travel, you know, you, I travel a lot, you know, stay a few, four days in Venice, two days in Florence, you know, you're traveling. Long exposure cityscape is a process, you know, you want to do long exposure, you have the ND filters, you know, you're going for that. It's a special look, you know. So you can do uh, long exposure cityscapes when you travel yeah. or not. I do a lot. I am crazy about uh, ND filters and stuff. And Archic, Architect, photograph architectural photography. Thank you. Oui. Uh, well, I've done that a, a lot for uh, you know our, uh, interior designer, or you know, so, sure. so I just shoot the buildings for catalogs, or you know, outside, inside. That's really a job. You know, that's uh, you get paid yeah. for. Uh, but okay. that has been my main job for eight years, actually. But you know what it is? I think with I think Scott, you are. I think I think the first two are the same. I think travel photography and long exposure cityscapes kind of fall under travel photography. But yeah. architectural photography is a separate genre. Yeah. That's where you're not trying to go, oh my gosh, I'm here in Copenhagen and look at this cool building. You're just going, look at this cool building. You're not trying to show it in context with anything. You're really, sh you're showcasing this building as a piece of art. Yeah. You're not You're not trying to say, I'm on vacation. You're, you're really showing a building as art. Is it at, at like you were uh, uh, photographing a train or something? You know, you're you're choosing something as for the art art that it is, regardless of where it is. And, and I think I think I, w I would almost I would almost put travel photography as you're trying to capture your trip. Hmm. Your right. trip might tell include the story of your trip. Yeah, yeah tell the story, story of your story. trip. Yeah, your trip might include beautiful architecture. Your trip might include going to see the city skyline. Um, you know, if you go to San Francisco, going up into the Marin Headlands and getting the bridge and all that stuff, mm. your trip might include a city with water in front of it and doing a long exposure, mm. all those different things. Yeah. Um, and so, and I would agree. I would say the, you know, the travel photography and long exposure cityscapes yeah. are almost the same thing. But, and, and like you said, the architecture, that's a job. Like yeah. you're, you're trying, you're trying to take a picture of this building so that somebody can put it on their website or brochure so that Absolutely. they can right. sell I did, that. I did that for hotels for many years, inside and, and outside. And one, so travel photography and long exposure shittyscapes, they mean you don't have to use lens correction. Architectural photography means you do. Yeah. Unless you have like this <laughs> till shift lens. Because or, one of them cares about slanted buildings, absolutely. the other one doesn't. Uh, hey, Marco, exactly. Marco Mackenbach says, hi there from the Netherlands. Why haven't you guys ever handled wildlife photography? Marco, I can answer this so easily. <laughs> so, Serge, I've never seen you take wildlife photography. Do you? you know, I actually did yesterday. He did. In, I, in saw, Florida, I saw your picture. For the first Facebook. time in my life, I did. I was in Tarpon Lake. Yeah. Okay, you're killing my story. Matt. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. You've never killing seen my me. story, dude. You're killing it. I'm sorry. Matt, you ever shoot wildlife? I, I, I don't. And I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't even explain it. It's just because I go to these places, like, uh, where was I? I was in June in uh, Olympic National Park, and I'm in a van with, like, eight guys that have all these monster lenses, and these deer <laughs> and buck and every mooses and mo How do you mooses. Mooses. What's, what's a plural moose? Meese? Mice? <laughs> Meese. Meese. Yes, meese. Meese's. All these meeses. Meeses come out, and everybody's bringing out their long lenses, and they, I'm just sitting there like I'm, I, I admire it. Like I, I'm like, oh, dude, I'd cool. be the same thing. I'd be going, but, 
hey, you know what? I'm between snacks. You guys go ahead and shoot. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's true. Yeah. I, I guess you, everybody has what interests them, and it just it doesn't personally interest me. Yeah, no, so we've I, had, I don't take no, we have wildlife courses on Kelby One mm -hmm. from Moose Peterson and other people. But uh, so while I, while like if Moose shows uh, a a slideshow of his wildlife, I'm blown away. But I have absolutely yeah. zero interest in shooting anything. It's true, yeah. 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 So, um, I can appreciate that, that's, it. To be honest with you, that's why we, we haven't covered that. Rogan asks a somewhat similar question. If you travel on safari, say, to Africa or something, will you compromise on the time of day you shoot? Well, I think, I think, while, I think travel to safari to Africa is really going to be determined on when the animals are active, mm. not what right. the light is. Um, true. Yeah. So, it's like you know, a football game in the middle of the day. Yeah. I, you <laughs> know what? I have to shoot football games in the middle of the day all the time. Or at night. Oh, you I'm don't get much, to shoot. I would much prefer in the day. Yeah. But yeah. Hey, um, uh, John Reswig asks, Sarish has mentioned in the past about the pol a possibility of his doing a course on processing using Photoshop elements. Any possibilities? I don't know enough the software to make a good tutorial on it. That's the thing. So You know, it's just Photoshop with some crap stripped out. Yeah. Yeah, when you use it in expert version. <laughs> Don't I did you do most of your work in Lightroom, though? Yeah. Yeah, I just use, you know, just stuff, you know, panos yeah. and blending uh, Yeah, that's the only thing I really go hey, into. Uh, Dave for. Clayton, our buddy Dave, is ah. asking, has Serge already researched Atlanta locations that you'll be joining us there for Photoshop World? And does he already have a wish list of images to shoot? Okay. First, bonjour, Dave. <laughs> bonjour. Good friend. Uh, no, actually not, Hello. but a guy reached out to me because I said on Twitter I was going to say, oh, I know, I'm from Atlanta, I can show you around. So I already have this guy who's going to guide me. That's two, two little tips I want to say on that. Whenever I go to a location I don't know, apart from watching, going to 500px, I always go on social networks to find people that will guide me there. I know you guys do that all the time. That's really important because he will take you to places that you will, you know, probably had to spend months there to find. And the other thing that I do, which is stupid, and I also learned that from you, is I go in the first... <laughs> stupid? Uh, I'm sorry. I go in the first uh, uh, po uh, postal card shop that I can find, you know, you know, uh, how do you say, postal card? That was stupid. And I just look, you know, what the professional photographers yeah. do of their city. And, oh, where yeah, is this place? Where time. is this place? Where is this place? You know, usually they have, they have good shots, you know, good. You know what I'm so, so surprised, though? No. Sometimes you get a postcard and you go and ask someone in the gift shop, where is this? And they have no <laughs> idea. Yeah, right. Is this in your country? <laughs> Does this look familiar? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, let's see. Architectural. For Here's interesting. Alexandra says, architectural photography is commissioned by the architect or interior designers. It's a day job to be an architectural photographer. You know what? That is a definition of it, but I bet you'll find 100,000 people that architectural photography is their passion that are not commissioned by anybody. Remember, there's a difference between being a professional architectural photographer and just being an architectural photographer. Well, I, I consider myself a travel photographer. I don't do it for a living. Yeah, I'll tell you a little story on that. Uh, there's a hotel in Paris called The Collectionnaire. It used to be the Paris Hilton, the Hilton, mm -hmm. but it's changed now. It's called The Collectionnaire. And I was going there. I was the 27th photographer that went there. And I, it's one of the only hotels where you have the view of the Eiffel Tower, and it's an amazing building. And I was the only one who shot it at sunset for the f 20 years been there. So I got this shot where you have the, you know, the Eiffel Tower and sunset and... And they just loved it, and they hired me for a huge contract to, to redo all the photos of all the rooms, everything, because I had that one shot. And, and the girl looked at me and says, you're the number 27 photographer that came, and no one had this idea. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I only shoot at sunset. Yeah. It's just a little story, you know. I don't know why people don't do that, but... You know, when if you go on booking.com and you look at nice hotels, a lot of the times the, the architecture, blah, blah, whatever you I don't know how to say Architectural. That word. Right. Shot is like, you know, bad photos or not sunset. You know, it's just yeah. come back to the basic that anything, you know, I mean, photography means writing with a light. So if the light is nice, it's going to be a nice photo. And uh, I get higher a lot like this way. All right, some more tips for the travel photography. Some more tips. Well, you know, you always have to have a good baguette. And, uh, ah, the baguette, yeah. Maurice, and the baguette. And croque monsieur. Croque monsieur, croque madame. You've got to have the croque madame Avec and croque, croque monsieur madame. when you come to Paris, that's for sure. Oui. Um, well, as a tips and tricks, uh, you know, composition. One thing which is really cool about London and Paris, and there's a lot of river and a lot of bridges, and bridges is the only thing where, because the problem with shooting at sunset is 
there's a lot of people at Sunset. Sunrise, there's no one. Sunset is loaded with people. <laughs> uh, so, uh, well, hey, that's, an, that's a yeah. very interesting point. At Sunrise, there's nobody there. At Sunset, it's loaded with people. That's And you well, get kind of similar lights, you know. And, and, when, and when we're talking cities... Um, if you think more people stay late at work than they do come in early. So Absolutely. if you're looking for lights on in buildings and all those different things, you're, you get better better results at some point. Absolutely. It's just a, I, have a, you know, I like to go to bed late, and so I, I'm not a, I go to bed, you know, I go late to bed and get late in the morning, so it's hard to be sunrise. I do more sunset, you know, except when I really you know, want to get a when shot. you're meeting me. Yeah, except when you come to Paris. <laughs> yeah, or when <laughs> hey, we have to take a short break. When oh. we come back, we got a really good question. Someone's asking Monsieur Serge, how do you get your images into every gift shop in Paris? Mm -hmm. And so we'll talk about that in just a moment. We are going to take a short break. We'll be right back here with our friend, Monsieur Serge, live on Zigrid. <laughs> Don't go away. How do you say? Bonsoir, madame and monsieur. <laughs> hey, um, so, uh, Serge, we were just, whoa, hi, Scott, Matt, Serge. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> In case you forgot. In case you forgot. Hey, um, you were getting ready to give us a tip, and you were talking about the shooting bridges and why, in, like in London and in Paris, of course, you know, there's a lot of places. Rome. Budapest, yeah, Rome. Right. Yeah, that's the one thing that's really cool about bridges is that you can get composition in a way, uh, like this photo or that photo, where you could have a thousand people on the bridge and it just looks like there's no one there. Because the way the bridges are made, if you are, you know, 45 degree angle to it, not only you get, you know, depth into the photo, but you get also this idea there's no one there because the foreground usually is water or whatever. And that's the, the only thing I can get away with. That's why I have so many bridges photo. People love bridge shots too. They're like lighthouses, you know, you can't get enough of them. Hmm. Let me look at another bridge shot. This is a nice bridge shot. Yeah. Which bridge is that? That is the- Is uh, that the Brooklyn Bridge? <laughs> no, that is what? Uh, that is, that is, I, that's the Conciergerie on the left, it's called. Ah. I forgot the name. I think it's the Napoleon Bridge. Napoleon? This one. The Napoleon Bridge. It's, but my favorite is Pont Neuf. I keep doing it. I know. It. Where's this is shot from? Yes. Yeah, oh, that was, that was. This is one of Serge's sneaky places in Paris to go. It is on, t it is on top of the Arabic Learning Center, is it? It's called Institut du Monde Arabe. The blah, 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 blah. Institut du Monde Arabe blah, blah. means the Institute of the Arab Arabic World, it's called. They have the most amazing view on Notre Dame. Yeah, and there's nobody up there. You just go up the elevator, you come out, there's a restaurant up there, but you don't have to go to the restaurant. And there's this giant balcony. You can set up tripods, you can set up anything. Rocket launcher, nobody would know. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, anyway. But yeah, you're, you're all by yourself. Yeah, this bridge, for example. That's there's a bridge. A, that's another one. You know, it, there's a lot of people there, but you don't see it. You know, that was right, mine. you really don't. And so that's the only thing you can get away with. That's with Matt. That's, I took this photo with Matt. Not that photo. But, no, not that photo. This, this one. I took, that was the one we got the first time I met him. Oh, yeah. Oh, five yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Five in the morning. You know what else is nice Wait. about shooting in the morning? Come on, give me a tip. Look at the water. The water. Oh, yeah. You're going to get still water in the morning. An hour later, it's not. Yeah, because of the boats. And that's amazing what you can do with still water because it really helps the composition. That's oh, yeah. the other thing. I mean, honestly, the best of the best is sunrise, but you have to be courageous because, like, I'm doing a warp shock in May in Paris, actually, with, with a lot of Americans. And, um, and we're going to get up at 5 in the morning, every morning. That's going to be rough, you know. Yeah. So that is, that's how do we, is this yours? Yeah. That's it's nice. It's Venise. So, Venise, So, yeah. Serge, there, there's something you do that, that you haven't mentioned, but I've seen a lot in your work. And I, and I think it also comes from, from what we talked about earlier in the show, which is you're going back to these places. But you put the sun 
in all these interesting little places. Like you get there at sunset, and when the sun gets low, you get it, you know, like right on the edge of the uh, the lion's head yeah. or yeah. or uh, some adornment door or whatever it happens to be. But but you get you put the sun, and and that really only comes from. I guess going back to a yeah. place or looking for it if you happen to get lucky the first time. But you always have like the sun coming through. Yeah, something. I just lo love shooting into the sun. I think it gives something extra to photo. And I think that's one of the really only reason why you should have like a pretty high end DSLR because that's, you know, for example, I have the 550D, I have the 6D, I have the 7D, I have the 5D Mark II, and the Sony A7R. That's all my cameras. You know, if you sold some of those, you could get a Mark III. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yes. But yeah, why yeah, not? Well, that's a good point. But Something you can't do with your iPhone. That's the point. You know, when you, you have the sun there, that's really when you need a good sensor. And uh, and I really have seen that over the time. You know, that's the, the big difference. Yeah. That and low light is the two things. You know, too much light, not enough light. And, you know, just having the sun always... On whatever photo, it's just, you know, it's magical. Yeah, you do very well, though. I like hey, let's it. go back to this question from Ian Kedrick, which he asks, you said you can buy Serge's photos in many places in Paris. How did you get your photos out there to be sold by others? Well, that's very simple, and that's how I make quite some money. Uh, with Serge that is today. a wealth of information on this, too. We, we talked about it. Uh, well, the key thing is to have a website. I mean, honestly, today I have, uh, you know, there's a gallery I've been trying to work with for 10 years now, and I just signed a contract like a couple of months ago. Uh, having a great website, well indexed, you know, on, so whenever a company now looks for photo of Paris, it's nine chains out of 10, it's going to come to my website. So I get all kinds of things, you know, for example, I had the Arc de Triomphe, uh, the company that put the marble on the top of the Arc de Triomphe, they contacted me for my shot of the Arc de Triomphe. You know, the Eiffel Tower contacted me for their shot of the Eiffel Tower. Uh, I got Samsung, who is trying to do like Apple stores in Paris. They wanted to have photos of Paris, so I put my photos all over there. And um, one of the biggest companies, two actually of the biggest company, Amex Postcard, contacted me and says, you know, you've got like, you know, we want your shots. So it all comes from having a good website. So when you post your photos, because a lot of people, a lot of people put cutesy names on their photos, like you know, and she weeps softly. No. So when you post, <laughs> so when you post yeah. your photos, do you give them a fancy name, and she weeps softly, no, or do you I, call it Paris photo? <laughs> no, I call it like the Louvre. Open yeah. That's one very important thing because I always go on Google search. What are people googling for? Yeah. You know, they will type Hotel uh, Louvre Paris, uh, Hotel Notre Dame Paris. Uh, photo of Notre Dame. So yeah, make sure you, the way you name it on f everywhere. You know, 500px Facebook. It's got to be consistent. You know, and that's how I get all the business today. That's a great tip. You know, because when you have 300 nice photos of Paris, you know, you're likely to have people contact I, you. I changed the name of my blog posts after after your last time on the show because you talked about that. Oh really? And I think you because you even made reference to a photo that I put up. And, and you'd said, you know, you put this photo up at this location, but you didn't name it yeah. that location. Well, that is you know, super to give it some cute I don't, I don't even know what I did. Don't but name it. Don't name it. And she cute. weeps softly. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Something. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, cool photo, you know. It's like, who's going to type a cool photo? Do it slowly. No, no. Do it sexy. <laughs> All right. All right, what's that from? Come on, what movie? You're a, you're a huge movie buff. Absolutely. Said, do it again. I, I was, no, no. Do it slowly. No. Do it, sexy. I don't have the slightest idea. I'll give you a hint. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, was it's in with it. uh, with uh, what's Jamie her name? Lee Jamie Lee Curtis. Lee Curtis. It to oh, he True had, Lies. Yeah, he has True the guy True record Lies. the thing. Anyway. James Cameron, True Lies, amazing movie. There you go. <laughs> Not shot in France. Okay. Hey, we got some more comments <laughs> right. coming. We're about running out of time, but we've got some ones. So uh, T Juice asks, uh, it's Mr. Serge, how do you get access to some of the normally inaccessible places to get your shots? This is a very, very good, good uh, yeah. comment. And you know what? The way I do it is I don't. <laughs> what I mean by that is I don't go to places which are, there's so many places which are easy to get if you Google it and find out about it. The, you know, the high vintage points, you know, there are so many, I mean, at least in Paris and wherever I've been. Okay, let's do this. Let's do Jerusalem. Never been there before, right? right? What do you go and Google on? What do you put in Google? Well, I had a guide when I was in Jerusalem, but so that. that oh, okay, happened. wait, stop. Back it up. How do you find a photo guide in, in Jerusalem? Is it a photo guide? Was it a fixer? Photo no, fixer no, no. It was a, a, it was was a different story because I was there to shoot with a very known photographer who had a guide, and we used the guy around. So, but I, I usually either I have a guide or just a friend from Twitter uh, help me out, and and uh, yeah, and he can like for example. The, my friend Jean-Michel Bertz, he wanted to shoot the wall 
the West Wall. Right. And uh, and he actually went there. It was funny because he went there like every hour of the day, and it was just loaded like at one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock. It was just tons of people like the all fountains, the time, like the fountains in Rome. Like, yeah, There's always all the there. time. And finally, he got some sort of authorization. Anyways. I don't, I've never had, I never had to do that, you know, just 500px, Google, Twitter, I've always found my way around, and, uh, and you know, like, I found this place for you, the, because I did a lot of research when you came, you know, you want, I wanted this Institut du Monde Arabe, and yeah. so Montparnasse, you know, because we wanted to shoot on, uh, on tripods, and uh, there is, in most of the places I've seen, if you really do research on Google, you will, you will be surprised to uh, find amazing places that people don't know about, because they just don't look for it. There you go. Hey, uh, Ron Deal says, you know, postcard and souvenir companies have large photo libraries already. How do you find fresh themes or sites to interest them? That's a good question. The thing is, and that's one thing that I love about photography is that every photo is different. I mean, I have 20 shots of the uh, Pont Neuf bridge. They don't, look, they don't look the same at all because of the light. I remember yeah. one night I was, I'm not kidding, I was driving home and uh, by a place that I shot to death. And it was a storm was coming, and it was getting all reddish and weirdo, and and I just stop on the motorbike because I always have my, you know, Canon 5D Mark II at the time, and tripod in my motorbike, so I just you know took it out and took the shot, and just left. It was two minutes, and it just looks completely different, like you've never been there before. You know, the light makes the photo. So um, I kind of lost what I was saying, but uh, so you know, you just. The thing is, if you have a great library of photos, people will contact you. That's my experience, you know. And the thing is to be a subscriber of Kelby One until you're good. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not kidding, because that's what I did. Uh, you know, you have to, I've subscribed, it was called Kelby Training at the time, or it was called yeah, even yeah. before that. I've been following these guys for years, and I learned everything from them. And honestly, it's, and this is also you're, my fourth, fourth Photoshop world I'm going to. And I just want to say something about Photoshop world. The way you did this, this one hour class, it's amazing because the teachers only have one hour to learn you something. So they cut the, you know, the un, you know, the not needed things to to the point to really right. They cut get, to the chase. Yeah, exactly. To really what you need. And so I, I don't. I think I learned more in three days than I have in a year. You know, and um, so anyways. So it's really well spent money. And this is my fourth Photoshop world. So please come and join me there. So they don't. Do it slowly. No, they do it very sexy. They do it <laughs> sexy. Hey, um, and uh, yeah. Hey, we, we've just about run out of time. By just about, I mean we have. Um, hey, it's contest time, though. We are giving away, of course, a full conference pass to Photoshop World. We've got Corey Barker's thing. Here's what we want you to do is tell us which, which prize you want to win. Uh, so go to uh, kelby1.com slash contest. Why, there it is right there. You're going to choose what show you're watching. While we're watching The Grid, you put in your name, your email address, your comment. And your comment needs to say, hey, I, I, I would like to win. Because, you know, if you know you're not going to be able to come to Photoshop World, you know, you don't want to be entered in that part of the contest. Say, I either want the Down and Dirty Tricks book. I either want Matt's compositing book. Or our big book here, Road to Seeing from Dan Winters. You can add that. Or if you'd like to win a full conference pass to the Photoshop World Conference and Expo, normally, what is it, 699 bucks. You're going to win it for free today. Someone's going to get lucky. Um, so just enter it, and uh, we'll choose winners. And we let them know next week. When do we let them know, Brad? <laughs> yeah, Brad doesn't know. Sometime soon. Sometime soon. Go to the website. I figure. We contact you somehow or another. Not very often. Anyway, hey, uh, first, uh, Serge, thank you very much for being on the show. Yes. It's always a pleasure to have you here for the second time. <laughs> and uh, thank you for all the tips. Uh, where can people go learn more about you? Photosurge.com. Photosurge.com. And uh, you, you, you do a lot, of, a lot of tutorials, a lot of teaching in both French and English. That's right. All right. Yeah. That's, now, that's it. And you that's got a YouTube channel. Oh, cat. dude, I've been right there with you, Serge. We've been there. Yeah. That looks so much better than the picture that I took. <laughs> and there's some search training courses. There's search blog or really. Yeah, I have a YouTube That's channel. That's beautiful, Serge. That Serge holding a case. Is that a composite, Serge? It is, based <laughs> on your book. No, yeah. it's based on this. Actually, you know this trick I showed you on the. Uh, it's a. It's a. The blurred filter. The new blurred filter in Photoshop. The new blurred filter in Photoshop. <laughs> hey, blur. hey, I just want to mention one thing before we go. So I'm going to plug something of mine. You know how I hate to do that. <laughs> but anyway, I did a pro I did a uh, a project for Coca Cola. And it, wow. went, it went live today. The project is, is this supposed to be tomorrow. So I'll tell you just a little bit about it. Tom, um, tomorrow is the United Nations International Day of Happiness. And the idea is to celebrate happiness that doesn't come from buying things. 
It doesn't come from what, and this is this is Koch words, or not, I'm sorry, the UN's words. Uh, it doesn't come from what the medias and celebrities tell us. Beauty and fashion isn't what make us happy. It's just about genuine happiness. And so uh, I, I'm one of the people that writes uh, for this Coca-Cola Journeys. And uh, I, what we decided to do was, and Brad, of course, helped me, because uh, we had to do a lot in a little time, was to take portraits of people who get their happiness by making other people happy. That's cool. And so we found five different people uh, and great stories, really interesting stories about these people of how that now some of them are very grand, like uh, a woman who does something amazing. She she t- she has trained her dogs to be uh, pet therapy dogs. And every week for a year, she takes these dogs to nursing homes oh, and things and interact with the people. We, we got to oh. go with her and we did our portrait at the nursing home. When you, I was in tears. When you see how these people react. I've seen and that. And she has two dogs. She has a big just gorgeous, sweet poodle, and then a little tiny one. And she takes the poodle, and she lays it in their arms. And that dog just goes, <laughs> <laughs> and they just scratch it. Oh, it's, it's the sweetest thing you've ever, the way they, they react, it's just unbelievable. She works with stroke victims and things. It's just, anyway, all the way to a florist who gets his happiness by delivering flowers, that when he gets to actually deliver them himself, when he comes around the corner with his big bouquet, people light up <laughs> to be musicians. Anyway, it's, I, I did a whole series of it. I'm, I'm, give me one second here. I'll show you, show you one of the pictures here. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Yeah, so this, let me open up this one here. Well, yeah, I could pull up the Coca-Cola. Well, I was going to show you one of the pictures. Here's one of the portraits that we did. I gave them all a tint so they would, would look, but uh, this, is, this is Matt Hires, and he is a musician. And he gets, of course, he gets enjoyment from playing music, and he gets enjoyment from looking out to the crowd and seeing people singing along and, and all that. That's a thrill. But what he does is, what he, where he really gets his happiness from is, he'll have people come up to him after the show, one on one, and just go, That song that you wrote, it, it meant so much to me. It was what I was going through at this time in my life. And it mm. just, how it, how, it, how it helped them and meant to them and, what, and all this. And it's just amazing, and, and it's it's really uh, so. Anyway, I did a whole. I wrote the story and did all the pictures. We we shot all the portraits in a day and a half. <laughs> we were all over the place. Shot uh, one out in Phoenix and, and four here in Florida, and uh, and this is literally him standing outside of his house. Just that's him in the middle of the street. You can see the stop sign over there to the right. Love the bouquet. And the idea was <laughs> that I would have them hold a tablet. Each person would hold a tablet that would sh- would give you some idea. Would show the thing that makes them happy. And it, in it, for his case, it's, it's music. And by the way, that photo of him was taken by Drew Gurian. So oh, that's cool. our buddy Drew, terrific photographer. He used to be Joe McNally's assistant. And, uh, and anyway, he happened to have shot him and, and Brad arranged for us to, to be able to use that. So, hey, can we, can we pull up the, let me, let me find it. Give me one second here. And uh, Matt will say something real quick while I'm looking up the Coca-Cola website. Surge. Yes. Oh, it's coca-colacompany.com. What is it? There's a dash in there. So it's, it's coca. I can't say something if you're. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll just talk to Brad. Don't coca. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Serge. There it is. CocaColaCompany.com. Ah, wow. There it is. I love Coca-Cola. Right on the homepage there. Coca-Cola. So that's it. So oh, this woman was 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 amazing. So um, she helps homeless veterans get um, uh, get housing and jobs and everything. And and she was just great. And anyway, uh, it's uh, so that's what that's what it's about. Tomorrow's the actual. Well, day for it, but uh, these are some of the people. Look, here's a picture of her and her dogs. That's oh, Marcia. That's, cool. that's beautiful shots. So, really cool shots. She was so so wonderful. Do and I this know is Marcia? and this is you know Marcia. And this is is, is Tiffany, and uh, and Ed Starling, and Matt, and Dave Gales. This just all have great stories and all. So if you get a chance, go by uh, coca coca dash cola dot com and uh, check out uh, about capturing everyday happiness. And I'm very excited. Thank you to. Coke for the opportunity to be able to do some stuff for them. It's a lot of fun. Cool. All cool. right. Serge, dude, thank you very much. Always a pleasure seeing you. Yeah, always can, a pleasure to see you too. Can I take you to dinner tonight? You can. Can I take you to your oh, favorite place? Man. Absolutely. Dude. We couldn't take him there for lunch today. No, because it's me and Serge at Burger 21. How do you, you like Burger 21? I love it. Dude, I don't you know, know what, what I said? I said, Serge, we're going to lunch. Where do you want to go? He goes, Burger 21. I was like, cool. I told Matt, you can't take him. Can't I'm taking him. There. I'm taking Best Serge. burger I've ever had. All right. Hey, thanks to all of our sponsors that sponsor us. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for putting up with us. I'm not having the chat working. <laughs> C'est la vie. C'est la vie. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Au revoir. Right here on the grid. Brad puts up break. <laughs>